Knight Rider, a shadowy flight into the dangerous world of a man who does not exist. Here's your look at the new Jada Toys. This is the Hollywood Rides Knight Rider kit. Knight Rider is an American television series that originally ran from September 26, 1982 to August 8, 1986. The series was broadcast on NBC and starred David Hasselhoff as Michael Knight, a high-tech modern crime fighter assisted by an advanced artificially intelligent and nearly indestructible car known as Kit. First thing we're going to do is measure off the Knight Industries 2000 and from bumper to bumper according to the Ultra Measuretron 5000 which I can assure you is in no relations to kits or at least that I am I am aware of from the bumper to the bumper of kits you're looking at the car standing or lengthwise you're looking at 7.8 inches in length which translated that into centimeters you're looking at almost almost 20 centimeters long Knight Rider is easily one of my all-time favorite shows. In fact, you could not have used a crowbar to pry my eyes away every Saturday night. I think it was Saturday night when I was growing up that Knight Rider was on. I must have watched every single episode that was featuring the classic car kit and, of course, his driver, Michael Knight. And the subsequent releases of the seasons on DVD are still things I go back to and watch to this day. Uh, Jada Toys has given us quite the splendid recreation of Kit here in die-cast form. And while I'm normally one that advocates for the 118th scale, being that that's kind of really the scale for me that I was picking up many of the television show slash movie recreation cars, Jada Toys really was the one that got me loving the smaller scale for all the cool cars that they have released over the years, with Kit being no exception. Now, originally, actually, of the Knight Rider kit, it wasn't going to be a 1982 Pontiac Trans Am, which is really a lot of things now. You really instantly, I know for myself, connect Trans Am to kit. But actually, prior to that, uh, they were actually going to make kit from a Datsun 280ZX, but General Motors recently, at that time, released NF body Trans Am, Firebird Trans Am, and it was substituted in pre-production. So just to think, the iconic car that Kit was for being a Trans Am at one point could have very well been a Datsun 280ZX. Just makes you wonder really when you think about it. Now, they went the route though, Jada Toys that is, not General Motors, is uh, they end up going the route of giving us the modified kits. And what I mean by modified by that is the sunroof windows on the top of the roof, and then most importantly, the inclusion of the fog lights down below in the bumper section. The original season would have actually depicted kits with a fully finished bumper, which actually didn't have lights underneath that. Uh, I am of two schools really on this. One thing for being like the most classic version of kit. I always, always really picture him with the lights down below instead of the full bumper. But if you want to think like a original OG kit, then yes, they probably could have given him the different bumper. Maybe a precursor to what Jada Toys will be giving us for a future release. And while I couldn't help but think Season 1 kit, I can't also help but think, looking at the way that this car looks, maybe perhaps this car could be repainted as car. That would be K-A-R-R the computer automated roving robot and then we could get ourselves a version of this where instead of having the red on the front it would have the yellow and it would have the notable gray featured down below just something again that J.D. Toys could certainly most definitely entertain I would be all for entertaining the idea of picking up more of these if they had the various different uh, incarnations of kits now looking at the car itself no not that car car I mean kit it has all the f notable features that most if not all the Jada toys uh, cars actually do feature and that is opening doors but one thing that's actually neat about this particular car as we open up the door when you open up the door 
it'll actually have the little readout, the little track bar of light that runs back and forth, which is really, really cool, the fact that they would incorporate that. Now, this is only functioned by opening and closing the door. So if you open and close the door, that is the only time that it will actually it will actually uh, go off like this. What's neat, though, is that something else you probably didn't know, that the front-mounted scanner bar, this little trackball of light that went back and forth, was also a nod to the original Cylons, if you could believe it, from Battlestar Galactica, which also just happened to be created by Glenn A. Larson. No connection. I mean, obviously, there's no connection between the Cylons and Kit, but it's a nice little nod, the fact that those two are connected by its creator. Again, it only works by opening and closing the door. In fact, once you close the door, it immediately stops that scanner bar from moving back and forth. It's not the only door that actually opens. It's the other door can also open, and you can see the interior, which they've put as much care and detail into the interior as they did to the exterior. The only thing that's missing on here is I feel like there should be there's either monitors right there or I think there's like a little roll up that this actually opens up and I think it might have been a scanner from what I remember. But everything else is certainly included in there right down to, we spin the car around, opening up this front door, right down to the trademark kit steering wheel, which I always hoped that I could get when I grew up on my own car, changing out the steering wheel of my car to something like this. Could you imagine steering and driving your car with this type of steering wheel? All the visual displays are there. Unfortunately, the only thing is actually missing from this is kit. Gone is the red square for the earlier seasons, or the three lines. They've put everything else in there, but they didn't actually put kit. Even opening the door, which I thought might have been a nice little surprise by having that light up, that's the only thing that they've left off. It's a small feature, but still, that's something that you would have hoped to open the door and be able to see on the inside, that little obviously kit himself that little uh, three bars uh, the seats themselves one thing I wanted to mention about the seats is the seats have a unique feel to them almost like a not quite a satin feel but they're a little bit more smoother than the rest of the plastic on the interior of the car the neat thing about this is also not only do you have free rolling wheels with the trademark uh, band of silver there but also you can open up the front hood it's not hindered at all, even when you open and close the door, you can still get full accessibility to the motor on the inside, which is done in a glorious, glorious chrome. The other thing you can also do too, which I love, is that you can actually open up the back as well. Now, talking a little bit about that different feel of plastic, the back storage compartment in the trunk has that same sort of feel to it. I can only describe it to you if you were actually holding it and feeling it for yourself. I would be able to tell you, doesn't it feel like a little bit more, it doesn't feel like it's flocked, but it feels like it's got almost a, like a soft, a slightly softer almost, uh, and I can't quite place it. It feels almost like, here's a really strange comparison like a marshmallow. It feels like the soft edge of a marshmallow. It's just a little bit different of a material I guess they must have used for the back compartment versus again like the rest of the interior of the car. And again that just opens and closes. You'll probably see one other thing too. We'll just close off the hood here. We spin the car around. One thing that's interesting though and I would love to know why they didn't do this is that the license plate isn't there. I looked in the packaging, perhaps seeing if maybe they had put it as a separate sticker or something else that, uh, you know, you would put on. But on the back, it actually just says Knight Rider. It doesn't say California. It doesn't say Knight. And it's not done in blue. I'm not sure if maybe for licensing, they just weren't able to get the licensing for the license plate. But sadly, that the back here doesn't feature Knight. just says Knight Rider. There's the undercarriage of the car. The tires themselves are not quite rubber. They feel like they're a slightly softer plastic. And when you do get this out of the packaging, you just want to unscrew. There's a bracket plate that actually mounts this to the 
to an actual really neat cardboard backing, which I'll just put the card down here for a second and I'll go ahead and grab that. Yes, reaching off camera, we'll just put car kit over and we can just put that right there. Uh, you've got this backdrop, this desert backdrop with some oil canisters that are blowing up and some explosions in the background. And while I wouldn't necessarily say you could display the car on a shelf like this, because you would obviously see cardboard on the sides, it's just again a nice way to finish off the look of kit here. The last thing I will talk about, we'll just move this off here, there is one bit that is a little on the fragile side for kit, and it's these side windows. The side windows, not sure if you can see it or not, but they are made of a slightly softer plastic. So you just want to be a little bit careful that you don't clip or bang those in any way whatsoever. Just a fantastic job once again. And kudos also to the folks over at Jada Toys for the fact that we are looking at a die-cast rendition of kit. Granted, yes, it's not first season kits, and it doesn't have the finished bumper on the front, and it does have the sunroof, but still I'm thrilled for the fact that we do get ourselves a kit that actually has opening doors, and of course that sensor bar on the front. Kit went through various different looks and designs over the scope and span of Knight Rider in the early 80s. Of course, he did get the upgrade to feature the lights in the front bumper, which is what Jada Toys based their design from. But then, of course, we've gotten us ourselves other changes later into the season where we got Super Pursuit Mode. How ridiculous was Super Pursuit Mode, and yet still pretty cool. You have to admit that a car being able to open up like that and go at the ludicrous speeds that it did was everything that every kid, I think, would have wanted in their own family car. And, of course, not something that could be feasible. I hope, though, that Jada Toys wants to approach Knight Rider again. Of course, there are many different possibilities that I talked about in this review. A simple, just straight out paint swap, adding a little bit of gray on the lower body of the car could easily give us car. Now, granted, yes, they could change the sensor bar on the front to be yellow, or they could go back to season one, I think it was, car, which just basically looked a lot like kit, and uh, there really wasn't that much different to it. They could also do that as well. But please, oh please, oh please, as ridiculous as it may seem, I would love to see them give us a Season 1 kit, but that's not the ridiculous part. I hope that they're able to one day give us Super Pursuit Mode kit in all his outlandish splendor. Some good news if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself. The die-cast Hollywood Rides release of Knight Rider's kit should be available now in retail stores if you're interested in picking this one up for yourself. If you did manage to pick it up for yourself, most definitely let me know in the comments section down below what you guys think of the Jada Toys. Hollywood Rides, and they've actually released a whole bunch of new Hollywood Rides die-cast cars we're going to be looking at in upcoming reviews, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you're new to this channel or long-time viewers and just never got around to it, it's okay. We're, we all make mistakes. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and why not while you're at it head on next door neighbor head on over to your next door neighbor and turn on that bell notification so that when future videos like future Hollywood ride reviews coming onto this channel you'll never miss out. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys next time.